The topic of this video is data sources. Data sources allow data to be fetched or computed for use in the Terraform configuration. A data source can query external sources and return data. Use of data sources allows a Terraform configuration to make use of information defined outside of Terraform or defined by another separate Terraform configuration. Each provider may offer data sources alongside its set of resource types. It allows retrieving of data from the provider's target APIs. Data source performs read-only operation and is dependent on the provider's configuration. Let's take a look at some of the data sources provided by the AWS EC2. I am on the AWS provider's index page. Under the EC2 section, we see data sources and resources. Under data sources, we see all the listings of data sources supported by AWS provider for EC2. Let's check the data source for AWS AMI. This data source can be used to get the ID of a registered AMI for use in other resources. Let's understand the concept of data sources through an example. Take a look at this data block. This is inside a .tf file, the same file where we have the other configuration. The data block creates a data instance of the given type, which is AWS underscore AMI in this case, and the name, which is the second block label and Ubuntu in our case. The combination of the type and name must be unique. So the type here is AWS AMI, as defined by the provider, whereas the given name is Ubuntu. Within the block, that is within the curly brackets, is the configuration for the data instance. A data block requests the read operation from the given data source, which is AWS AMI in this case, and export the result under the given local name, which is Ubuntu. The data source and the name together serve as a unique identifier. Through this data source, the objective is to find the latest AWS AMI image of the Ubuntu type. On the Amazon Docs, we can find the filters that we need to use to find the current Ubuntu server image. In our data block, we have taken the values filter for the Ubuntu image from this location. Also, the virtualization type image that we are looking for is HVM, that is another filter. And similarly, the owner ID we get from the same page, which is mentioned here. Most recent equal to true means that if more than one result is returned, we use the latest AMI. Using all of this information and filters, we can identify the latest AMI image that we want to use in our example. Once the image ID is found, it is used in the instance resource. This is how it has been used. All data sources have a list of returned attributes for referencing in other parts of the Terraform configuration. Each data instance will export one or more attributes, which can be used in other resources as reference expressions of the form data.type.name.attribute. We can then use that resource like any other resource in Terraform. This is how it has been used here. Data.type which is AWS AMI, the name which is Ubuntu and the attribute of the image which is ID. To enhance our example, there is already an EBS volume created in the AWS account. We can see that the state is available right now. It is in the same availability zone as the instance would be created in. The idea is to use this existing volume and attach it to the new resource, the new EC2 instance that we will create through the Terraform configuration.
In order to do so, we need to search for it through Terraform data sources and then attach it to our EC2 instance. Using data source as AWS underscore EBS underscore volume, we can get information about an EBS volume for use in other resources. In order to select the already present EBS volume, we are using two filters. First is on the type of volume, which is GP2. And the second filter is on the name tag with value as my vol. Once we get the EBS volume details, it can then be attached to the above created EC2 instance. For that, we have created a resource AWS volume attachment. The volume ID is of the format data dot type, which is AWS EBS volume. The name is EBS volume and the attribute is ID. It will then be attached to the instance, which is created above. Let's start the flow with init and then plan. As we can see, two resources will be added. First is the AWS instance. And second is the AWS volume attachment. The volume is already existing. It will just attach that volume to the AWS instance. We will apply the configuration. It returns in success and on the AWS console, let's verify the result. I'll do a refresh here. The existing volume is now in use. There is another volume that has been created along with the EC2 instance. Let's check the instance. This is the one which we created just now. And it has two volumes. And this instance is using the Ubuntu image. Let's destroy the config. We see that two resources were destroyed. The instance has got in terminated state. And if we check the volumes, the existing volume has again got an available state. This volume is not deleted as it was not created as part of the Terraform configuration. That's all for this video. We understood the capabilities of the data sources and how it helps us integrate external resources with our Terraform configuration. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success Certified